Hi all, in this video I just want to go through how to use the time node. Now the time node is how you do animation time offsetting in, um, in MASH when you're in the repro mode, so when you're outputting a mesh. And uh, yes, yeah, so here we have a flapping bird. Uh, Ta-da! And the animation is happening a couple of different ways. We've got um, the wings and the body are being animated through the transform, and then the tail is being animated through a deformer. Uh, the spender former here, so it doesn't matter how the animation happens, uh, as long as, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter how the animation happens, it will make it through into the time node. So let's create our mash network, so I'm selecting the bird and go and create mash network. So we probably just want six of these, and we want them spread out down the z-axis, like so. And then if I just hit play, is what we've got. Okay, so... This bird animation that we have here, I'm just it's a looping animation, and I'm going to go into the graph editor, and I'm actually just going to go and turn this um, looping off, uh, just so you can see what we can do here. So I'm just going to turn that off. So now when I play this back, we get one flap, no more animation. And this is because the time node can do the looping for us, so I just wanted to show you that. So in Maya 2016 extension 2, uh, the time node is created automatically when you uh, create a mash network in the repro mode. So let's just turn it on. And then the only thing we need to do is set the animation length to the length of our animation, which is 15 frames. So I'm just going to set it to 15 frames, and then I'm going to hit rewind and play. And the looping is happening automatically, basically. So a few cool features here. We've got the stagger frames. So we can turn the stagger frames up, and this is the total number of frames from start to end that the animation will stagger over. So we've got six frames difference between the flaps at the moment, and it's in order. So it's kind of like one frame difference, two frames, three frames, four frames, five frames uh, difference, what, just over. So um, no, <clears throat> we can use the full length of the animation just by setting this to the same as the animation end value here, so 15 in both. And then we can hit random stagger. So now the birds are getting a completely random value. And then obviously there's a um, uh, random seed for that. So yes, that's pretty cool. Uh, we can also limit the number of loops, so we can set this to three, and then after three flaps, the birds will all stop, so like that. Um, and then uh, what else I'll show you? I'll show you this time scale. So time scale, if I just uh, keep playing this, uh, if I reduce the time scale to say 0.2, then our animation becomes uh, a fifth of the speed. It goes at a fifth of the speed. So, um, and it's all nice and smooth, and that's because the animation coming into the uh, the animation on this bird is all, all done through keyframes, which means we can interpolate it nicely. Um, likewise, you can speed this up and make it flap really frenetically. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's animate this, uh, animate the time scale. So we go um, set key here, and then on frame 100, we will set um, a key of one. So sorry, set a key of zero there. So this means that our birds will start not flapping, and then they will speed up until they reach the normal flapping speed of frame 100. So let's watch what happens. So we hit play, so no flapping, and then we flap, and we flap very quickly, and then we slow down slightly. Um, so the reason that this happens is because on frame 50, we have a time scale of just, let's say, a half, which means that on frame 50, we're actually on frame 25's worth of animation. And then in the last 50 frames, we need to do 75 frames worth of animation before we settle down and just animate at a normal speed. So this is uh, a bad thing. So this is not what you want, probably, if you're starting your animation speed up like this, if you're animating time scale. What you probably want to do is turn on simulated time, which will fix that problem. So if we turn on simulated time now, you notice there's actually no speed up when we start flapping and everything kind of goes at a normal speed. However, because this is a simulation, what you'll now need to do is take your network here, your mash network, and then bake it out to a Lembic before you send it out to render over a render farm. Uh, because yes, it's a simulation, like particles or whatever. So, uh, like you would with particles. So, okay, let's turn that off and let's break the connection here. And then, so we're back to having our random animation. So pretty cool, okay. So um, I'm going to turn off random stagger, and I'm actually going to turn off stagger frames uh, just uh, to demonstrate the next feature. So they're all flopping at the same time here, right? So we have the strength and fall off. So um, I'm going to set the strength mode to animation trigger for now. Okay, so I'm going to roll down the fall off, so I'm going to create a fall off object. So I'm going to create like so. This gives us a nice fall off object. And then I'm going to move this out of the way here. Shrink it down a little bit. I'm going to keyframe it, so I'll keyframe it on frame, let's say frame 0, or somewhere thereabouts, and then on frame 100, I'm going to move it out the other side, 
and then I'll keyframe it there. Cool. So now when I play this back, which what happens, as the bird enters the fall off, it starts flapping, and then it stops when the fall off passes out. So the fall off is being used to trigger the animation. So how do you get the bird to start flapping and then keep flapping once the fall off object has left it? Well, we have this add mode on the fall off object, so we just change this to add, and then once the fall off object leaves, we're still flapping. So it's pretty cool. Um, we can also use the add fade mode, which means that the uh, birds will stop eventually again. So um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So I'll put this back to normal and play through. So here you go, that's what you get. And then we'll see what the other mode does. So we've got animation trigger, we've got animation frame here. So what animation frame does is it will, um, as the bird as the bird passes through the um, fall off object, it will animate from its starting frame, animation start, to its animation end, between the edge of the fall off and the center of the fall off. And then when it go, leaves the fall off, it will undo the animation. So we're flapping and then we're unflapping effectively. The animation is reversing. So um, how can that be useful? Well, um, let's say we've got this uh, fall off ramp here uh, and we can reduce the effect of the fall off object. Actually. So what I can do is we're going to only going to get a part of a flap now. So we're going to go slightly up and then slightly down like so. And then if we set this to add, again, which happens, we get that part flap and then that stays there, which is pretty cool. Let's increase this. So we're going to get the flap that goes up and then we're going to stop there. Pretty cool. I don't know why that would be useful with a flapping bird, but it might be useful in a different situation. So anyway, we'll put that back to normal, and there we go. So all that done. Um, I'm gonna go back onto the time node, and I'm gonna turn strength off completely, and so we'll put it back to our looping animation, and then let's get our random stagger back. So this is how you use the uh, time node in Mash, and for you know to get animation time offsets when you're using uh, when you're using the repro when you're using the mesh mode. Um, and this isn't how you do time offset when you're using the instancer. That's for another tutorial. There's actually a tutorial on Vimeo that shows you how to do that. Um, I would show you now, only there is gin waiting for me, so I'm off. Um, anyway, I hope you found that useful.